Welcome to Saz Talks Money, where all we talk is money. I'm your host, Adam Sosnick, and I'm here to help you build your wealth and to save that money. On today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the 10 things that are killing your wealth. Let's talk money. All right, so let's start with this. Off top, I want you to win with money. I started this whole show with one reason to help people get smarter with money. I had to learn this stuff the hard way, all right? So what's the problem in America today? The problem in America today is this. Everybody's trying to keep up with the Joneses, all right? Now, I don't know the Joneses. I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm not trying to even keep up with the Kardashians. All I'm trying to do is keep up with myself and my wealth. Now, did you know that the average American will make between one and two million dollars in their lifetime? Did you know that? So making money is not the problem. Spending money is. And what's at the heart of this problem? It's this. We buy things we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like. Is this a problem you have? This is a problem a lot of Americans have. So here's the deal. I'm going to ask you a question. Ready? Ready? Would you rather look rich or be wealthy? Would you rather look rich or be wealthy? That's a question I had to ask myself over 10 years ago when I actually started making money and I said, give me option B, be wealthy. So today we're gonna go over 10 things that are absolutely killing your wealth and by the end of this, hopefully you're gonna get smarter with money, understand where your money's going and start focusing on your net worth. All right now, so let's jump into these 10 wealth killers. All right, wealth killer numero uno, it's at the top of the list, that's your car. I'm sorry to tell you, if you're a car guy, I got some bad news for you. Now here's the deal, if you Google wealth killer, you know what's gonna pop up? Boop. Cars, top of the list. Now for me, cars are definitely the most overrated purchase you can possibly make. I actually went all throughout my building. I live in a pretty expensive building. Cars galore, Maseratis, Ferraris, Corvettes galore, just collecting dust. You can't even leave your house right now it's due to Corona. And I went through and I saw how much money people were spending on these depreciating assets. It's crazy. Why is a car the number one wealth killer? Let's break it all down right here. This is a long list. I don't know if I'm going to read all this. You got car payments. You got car insurance. You got finance charges. You got down payments. You got tax, tag, title. You got maintenance. You got upkeep, accessories, modifications. When well, you want to put tints on the car, you want sound systems in your car. You want all these upgrades to your car to look fresh and look dope but it's just costing you money. And that, my friends, here's the catch, here's the rub. That's if everything goes according to plan. How many times have you had a car where everything has just gone according to plan? No, eh, that never happens. Why is that? Because you're always gonna have something that goes wrong, flat tire, someone backs into you, you get in an accident, you know, tickets, God forbid you get towed, God forbid you get a DUI, all of a sudden your car just turned into an absolute financial disaster. Now here's the deal, let's jump right into the numbers so you can understand where we're coming from. You don't believe me, let's check the facts. Average new car in America today costs $37,000. Compare that with a used car that's 20 grand. Average car payment in America for a new car, 550 bucks, what? That's the average for a new car in America. That is your money driving away. Used car, that's 390 bucks. Now if you say, hey look, I just like to lease, man. I don't buy cars, I just lease my car. Average lease payment, 450 bucks. Now here's the catch with the lease. If you got a lease, that's a payment for life. Every two or three years you get a new fancy ride, but that's payment, that's payment, that's payment every single year of your life. Now here's the deal. Depreciation, a car is a depreciating asset. Did you know that? Did you know that cars go down in value as you drive it down the road? First year of a new car, it'll go down 30%. So if you bought a car, $37,000, depreciates 30% the first year. After that, it's a used car, then it starts to depreciate 15% per year. After five years of having a car, your car will depreciate 60%. Oh yo yo, 60%. Depreciating asset, let me just give you some final numbers here. You buy a new car, that's $37,000. Five years later, that car is worth $15,000. Not a good investment. Used car, you buy it for 20 Gs. Five years later, that's worth $8,000. You think this is a good look? Not a good look. So here's my final piece of advice when it comes to having a car. The game has changed. When people were driving cars all throughout America, you had to have a car. It was a need. Now a car is a luxury. Now a car is a want. Now what do I mean by that? Now, in America today, we got Lyft, we got Uber. People are working remote. You don't have to show up to an office every day. You got options. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you have a car versus not having a car, three words, 
Do the math. Do the math. I brought a buddy of mine into my studio to see how much he was spending on his car. He had no idea that what he thought was a $20,000 car was actually costing him $40,000. So like I said, do the math. You thought you were buying this car for 18, putting down two and financing 16. So you're thinking you're spending around 18 Gs. Did Correct. you have any idea you were spending 40 on this? Uh, no, I did not. How much is your car actually costing you versus how much could you save not having a car? Let me help you out and give you some quick numbers. The average annual cost of a car today is $8,500. That's if, like I said before, everything just goes according to plan, right? You got car insurance, average car insurance in America today, 1,750 bucks. So the game has changed, do the math. Your car is the number one wealth killer. Wealth killer number two, we're talking about fashion. Fashion, ever heard of it? I live for fashion. People love their fashion. What are we talking about with fashion? It's clothes, shoes, purses, jackets, accessories, belts. Stop, stop, stop focusing on trends. Stop focusing on labels. Stop focusing on the brand names. Start focusing on just your fit, what makes you feel good, and being comfortable in your own skin. Let's break down the most expensive brands you can spend your money on. You got your Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. You got Louis, Prada, Fendi, Versace, 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 I come to the mansion, I stay in Miami. You got Dolce & Gabbana, Armani, Hermes, Supreme, is that still even a thing? Polo, Tommy, Burberry, and guess, and guess what? Like I said before, the most important thing you can be is comfortable in your own skin. One of my favorite memes out there, I love it, I love it, I love it. It's a picture of Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, and Bill Gates, one of the other richest men in the world, and it says, $156 billion in one picture, and not a Gucci belt in sight. All right, you don't need a Gucci belt to feel rich. Just save that money and just do you. Now, one of my favorite songs is by a rapper called Macklemore. Let me know if you ever heard this song about, I be popping tags, only got $20 in my pocket. There's a famous line in that song, he goes, one man's trash, that's another man's come up. Now, I'm not saying you need a shop at the thrift store, all right? But there's some sick deals in there. I don't know if you've been to a thrift store. But the biggest thing is that understanding that clothes, that fashion, they're depreciating assets. If you're not wearing them, they're in your closet, they're taking up space, costing you money. You can get it at a thrift store. These days with Corona, there's a lot of fancy clothes in your closet you can't even wear. Can't even wear, I'd rather have the cash. So understand something, $156 billion in a photo, no Gucci belt in sight, keep that in mind. Wealth killer number three, jewelry. Now when I think of jewelry, unfortunately, I've been ingrained because of hip hop to think of that bling bling, every time I come around your city, bling bling. A pinky ring worth about 50, bling bling, $50,000 on a pinky ring, I don't know about that, Little Wayne. So hip hop has changed the culture when it comes to jewelry. How many times you see somebody walk around, they got gold chains, they got earrings, they got grills in, they're just iced out, they're dripping, wasting money, y'all. Waste the money. Jewelry is a depreciating asset. I'm not sure if you knew that. You spent $100,000 on a jewelry, you're not getting that $100,000 back. I guarantee you that. So in hip hop, it's all about this gold chain. What's up with that? What's up with that? I actually interviewed a dude. I said, you came across $5,000. What's the first thing you do? And he goes, man, I'll get myself a gold chain. So if you get a check for five grand, what are you doing with that five grand? This month, what's up? I'm gonna get a chain. I said, damn, that's the first thing you're doing when you get $5,000? He said, yeah. Hip hop, love you. Love your lyrics, bad messages when it comes to money and when it comes to jewelry. So here's the most important thing to understand with jewelry. It is not an investment, it is simply a status symbol that more than likely depreciates. And the last thing that you should understand is just be you. You don't need jewelry to be the cool guy. You don't need to be popping ice in order to look good. Just be you. Understand that maybe you have one watch, that's cool. For a guy, you have a watch, you're good, that's a jewelry you have. Maybe you have a necklace, no big deal. But you don't need a watch, you don't need a necklace, a jewelry, earrings, grill, like you don't need all that. Just be you, save that money. Wealth killer number four, eating out and ordering in. Quick little stats real quick. According to the Bureau of Labor, right, the average American household will spend $3,000 a year dining out. That is your money literally being flushed down the toilet. All right, you see what I did there? That breaks down to about 250 bucks a month of just eating out and ordering in. So the average meal will cost you $4 if you cook at home. The average meal if you eat out will cost you $13. That's a $9 difference. It's five times more expensive 
to order in than it is to cook at home. Five times. So you know who knows this? You know who knows this? The delivery apps. How many times have you ordered from DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, Postmates, Bite Squad? They want your money. They want you staying home and ordering in. They don't want you to learn how to cook. What I want you to do, learn how to cook. Learn how to make some eggs. Make a bowl of cereal if you need to. All right, I'm not saying you need to be Chef Emeril Lagasse or something like that. But just learn how to cook. It's okay to treat yourself every once in a while. I'm not saying you can't ever eat out. That'd be ridiculous. But start to focus on more special occasions of eating out. Maybe a date. Maybe it's something you want to celebrate. But not every single night of the week, every single day for lunch. You can't be doing that. Speaking of lunch, case example. If you go out to lunch every single day, you go to work. You work five days a week, $10 a day. That's $50 a week you're spending on lunch. You extrapolate that times 52 weeks a year, that's over $2,500 you're spending just on lunch. If you just bring your lunch to work, that'll at least cut that in half. Save that money. Number five wealth killer, smoking. Talk about your money literally going up in smoke. Not a good look. Let's break down the three things that people are spending their money on when it comes to smoking. Number one, cigarettes. Average pack of cigarettes today costs $6.28. If you're a pack a day smoker, that's $188 a month. That's $2,200 a year. And if you just can't quit smoking over 10 years, you just spent 22 G's. Now people are smoking jewels these days, right? Never smoked a jewel in my life, I don't know. But apparently a device costs $35 just as an entry fee to walk into the door of smoking jewels. Just to get started, a four pack of pods is $15.99. That adds up to $180 a month. Pretty much the same as smoking. Now all my weed heads at, where you at? Where all my weed heads at? Apparently the average consumer spends $650 a year hitting that blunt. Now here's the deal, a quarter of people spend one to $2,000 of their hard earned money of their green on the green. One of the things I always say is health is wealth. So if you're a smoker, you're coughing, you're not feeling so good, you're high, you're lazy all day, what's that doing for your productivity? What's that doing for your wealth? Your health is your wealth and that's your money up in smoke. Wealth killer number six is drinking and getting shwasted. All right, here's the deal. There's three levels of drinking, three places that you typically would drink at, right? You drink at home, right? Little house party, little do your thing at the house. You go to the bar, local pub, no big deal. Or you go all up in the club, bottle full of bub, mama, I got what you need. Here's the deal, let's break down where these three levels of drinking come in, how much it's costing you, and the three types of drinks that you might drink, all right? So number one, you got beer. Number two, you got wine. And number three, you got liquor is quicker, right? So at average cost of, you know, bringing a case of beer home, you want to bring a, a six pack, a 12 pack, you know, 10 bucks. Maybe you're a PBR kind of a person, only costs you two bucks, you save that money. Wine, average bottle of wine costs you $15. Average bottle of liquor, $25. Just drink it at home, that's what it's gonna cost you, between 10 and $25. Now you want to step out, you want to do your thing, you want to hit the streets, you want to go to a bar. Now we're gonna talk about paying a premium, a markup price, and what that comes out to. So now let's say, a bo let's say a beer is $2, right? $2 is what it's gonna cost to bring a beer home. Now if you're gonna have a beer in a bar that's a 300 to 400% markup, that's six to eight dollars for that beer, right? Glass of wine, that's a markup of 150 to 350%. And liquor, if you're gonna have a drink or a cocktail at the bar, that's a 300 to 450% markup, just for the opportunity to sit at a bar and have a drink, no big deal. Now. If you want to hit the club, baby, you want to be all up in the club scene, now let's break down what it's going to cost you to be all up in the club, like 50 cent. Average bottle of club is $350 to $575 for each bottle. That is a thousand percent markup of what it would typically cost you if you just wanted to buy a bottle of liquor and take it home. Now, if you've ever been in a club, like I used to be all up in the club, I've spent my fair share in the club, we could roll the tape on that. Now, if you did not know this, you are not paying for the liquor. You are paying for what? The real estate. You want to be in a prime location in the club. You want to be seen. You want to be all up in the mix. There's a premium for that, and that premium is 1,000%. So when I was broke as a joke, and I was a 20-something, and I had no money in my life, and I wanted to go out in the club, little hot tips. I'm not saying you should do this, but this is what I did. I would roll with a girl. She would bring a bottle in her purse. 
bring it to the club. Next thing you know, we got a bottle in the club. I'm not saying you should do that, but that's what we did. What I would do sometimes, I would hold a flask, take sips, save that money. So understand that drinking at home versus at a bar versus all up in the club, there's different price ranges for this. So understand what you're getting yourself into when you step out and try to hit the seat. Wealth killer number seven is gambling with your money. Now, if it, there's number one rule with gambling, if you did not know this, you're about to learn this now, and that is this, the house always wins. Now, what does that mean? You might be gambling and in the short term, you're playing blackjack, you're playing poker, you're playing craps, you're at the slot machines, you might be up in the short term. But in the long term, the house always wins. So their goal at the casino, right, is to keep you there as long as possible. So what do they do? There's no windows, there's no sunlight, it's dark, it's smoky, they're giving you free drinks, they want you to get a little you know, tipsy and tore up, next thing you know your inhibitions are a little low and you're gambling, you're losing money. Now how much does the average person lose when they go gambling? Well I'll tell you right now, between $500 and $600 a year. That's your money, now that's not a lot of money, that's not crazy. But now let's talk about if you're addicted to gambling, right? So for my addicted gamblers out there, these might be some uncomfortable truths. So the average amount of a debt for someone who's addicted to gambling is between $55,000 and $90,000. That's a lot of dough. Now you ladies are a little bit better. The average lady who's addicted to gambling, that's only 15,000. And here's an uncomfortable truth. 20% of, of compulsive gamblers end up filing for bankruptcy. So be smart with your money. So it's okay to go to Vegas for a weekend, have a good time, spend a little dough but don't fall into that gambling trap. Now speaking of a gambling trap, let's talk about the lottery. Everybody wants to play the lottery, everybody wants to be a millionaire. Let's talk about what happens when you play the lottery. Now here's a number. The average person in America will spend $225 a year on the lottery. That's not crazy, that's a dollar a day. That's nothing crazy here. It's less than a dollar a day actually. Here are your odds of winning the lottery and just living the good life. One in 300 million. One in 300 million. Now if you don't know how tough of odds those are, let's talk about some other things and just break that down. So the odds of you being in a plane crash, one in 11 million. The odds of a shark attack, one in 3.75 million. The odds of you getting struck by lightning, one in two million. And the odds of you making it to the NBA, one in 3,500. So what does that mean? You have a greater odd of being an NBA player making it to the NBA in a plane that's struck by lightning and a plane crash than you are to win the lottery. So if your get rich quick scheme is to win the lottery, you got another thing coming. Wealth killer number eight, just being a good old fashioned American couch potato. Now according to Nielsen, the average American will watch five hours of TV a day. Now what does that mean? Five hours a day, that's 35 hours a week, that's 77 days a year, that's 20% of your life of being a couch potato. So you know who knows this? You know who knows you love sitting around doing nothing watching TV? Well, all the following options. And uh, I'm gonna have to take a breath to read all this. But you got TV, cable, direct TV, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Crackle, HBO Max, CBS All Access. You got Tubi, Disney Plus, Apple TV, Fandor, Quibi, and now the latest is you got Peacock by NBC. That's a lot of TV, y'all. Now, I guarantee you there's somebody out there in America, unfortunately, that has all that. I gotta have my shows, I gotta have my TV, I'm just home, doing nothing, sitting on the couch. Now just add to that, the average American will spend seven hours a week playing video games, add on top of that, the, the average video game console is between two and $500, the average game costs 60 bucks, then you got your in-app purchases, just spending money sitting in front of a TV, watching TV, playing video games. Instead of spending your time, invest your time. Maybe that's reading, Maybe that's working out. Maybe that's starting a business. The number one thing that I did, rather than sit in front of a TV, I used to love football. Every Sunday of my life, football, football, football. I said, you know what, no more football for me. And what did I do? I started this money show with that extra time. So imagine what you can do if you take five hours a day back of stopping watching TV. Number nine, being in the wrong relationship. Now let me tell you something. I've spent more money on all this stuff right here being in the wrong relationship. Now let's break down some of the numbers that goes behind being in the wrong relationship, right? So the average amount of partners a man will have in his life apparently is 7.6 compared to women that's 2.6. Now I don't know about you, men tend to brag, women tend to keep their things a little bit close to the vest, secret, but I don't know, what do you think? Men, seven, women, 2.6, you think that's high, you think that's low? What do you think? Average relationship in America today lasts two years, 
nine months. Have you had a relationship last longer than three years? Then you're beating the odds right there. The average American will spend $120,000 in their lifetime on dates and in being in the dating world. That's a lot of dough. The average wedding cost today $34,000, the average engagement ring, $6,300. Now why should you understand all these numbers before you get married? It's this, 50% of all marriages in America today end in divorce, 50%. So that means this, flip a coin on whether your marriage will actually work or not work. I don't like those odds. So what are people understanding that they might need to do in order to prepare for those odds? Well, 50% of millennials are actually getting prenups these days. What do you think? If you're getting married, would you do a prenup? Would you sign a prenup? Would you ask your partner to sign a prenup? These are things that are happening today. Flip a coin whether you're gonna get divorced or not. Now, you might be asking, what's the average length that people stay married? You might've heard of the seven year itch. After seven years, people say, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Well, apparently in year eight, they have their answer right there. That's the average amount of time that people stay married in America. Now. If you're gonna get divorced, the average divorce will cost you $13,000. That's just in lawyer fees and in court fees. That's not to mention alimony and child support and all the other stuff you might have to get into. So being in the wrong relationship, not only may you end up being heartbroken, you might up end up being heart broke. You see what I did there? So choose wisely before you start spending your time, your money, and your heart on the wrong person. All right, now it's time for wealth killer number 10, which is just going shopping. It used to be that the favorite American pastime was baseball. Now it's just going to the mall. So let's break down the definition of shopping, right? So shopping, the definition is to visit places where goods are sold in order to look and buy things. That's just shopping for you, right? So what it comes down to shopping is consumerism, materialism, and just good old fashioned spending money on stuff. Right? So I'm not saying you need to be a minimalist, but that might be something you need to look into these days after doing all this stuff. So how often do you go to the store and say, all right, I'm just going into Target. I'm gonna get one item and I'm gonna head out. Next thing you know, you got a whole shopping cart full of stuff. That's America today. So what does all this shopping and materialism lead to? Well, it leads to debt. Here's some numbers for you. The average credit card debt in America today, 5,700 bucks. The average household debt in America today, $137,000. Talk about shop to your drop. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you have not seen my video on how to win the money game, please check that out right here. And if you have not subscribed to Valuetainment Economics, please click right here and subscribe. And as always, save that money. All we talk is money. All we talk is money.